It's finally here, the beginning of a major housing crash, one that many experts have been predicting for years now. In today's video, we answer the big question, is this really the final scene or could all of this be the greatest head fake in modern economics? For the first time in recent memory, the median sale price of a home in the United States has tumbled, going from an all-time high of $396,000 on July 3rd to $384,000 on July 23rd. That may not sound like a lot, but it marks the first time in years that we've seen any kind of meaningful decline in prices, and along with this, there is an alarming number of indicators flashing red, suggesting even more pain ahead, a development that has bulls rethinking their investments and sellers panicking to dump their properties. Now most of this video is going off Redfin numbers, which as far as I can tell are released weekly, and this recent report is one of the most shocking of the last three years. Starting with prices, we find that they've declined over 3% in just 3 weeks. That may not sound astonishing to you, but understand that during the Great Recession, which is considered by many the worst housing crash in America post-World War II, in that period, the strongest single-month slowdown was 1.19%, and we just had a month nearly 3 times worse than that. To make matters worse, price drops are skyrocketing past 7%, which according to Redfin is the highest number since at least 2015, and maybe one of the worst numbers in history, they just don't have the data going back very far. Inventories are also on the rise, and according to Bill McBride, one of the most respected real estate analysts out there, these next couple of months will be incredibly important in determining the fate of the housing market and ultimately the fate of the US economy. His recent article makes references to a piece published by Black Knight, which claims that June marked the greatest deceleration in home price growth on record, a historic decline that according to their stats is the worst, dating back to at least the early 1970s. Now with all of this bad news, you would think that real estate related stocks are taking a beating. For example, the largest home builder in America, DR Horton, saw a 44% decline since peaking in December of 2021 like the rest of the stock market, but instead of continuing to fall in the past month following these new shocking reports, DR Horton actually went up nearly 30% in the last month alone. A bizarre development considering what was said by Redfin and other real estate experts. So how could it be possible that we're seeing home builders go up while there's supposedly a housing crash coming? And this is where the story gets a bit controversial. In fact, Black Knight went on CNBC to talk about their findings and here is what was said. But before I show you this surprising clip, take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the content thus far. Now back to the clip. Joining me with more is Andy Walden, Vice President of Enterprise Research at Black Knight. Andy, uh, in a way, that, that sounds impossible. That is just 1%, the, the slowdown in growth uh, back in 2006. What's different about what we're seeing here? Yeah, I mean, every, everything, right? Uh, there's a lot different with what's going on right now. And certainly, we were at much higher rates of home price growth heading in. So I think to, to be expected, right, with, with rates rising as quickly as they could or as they have, that you're going to see a slowdown in prices, but certainly seeing the, the, the market slam on the brakes very, very quickly here through the summer months. You see, everyone here on YouTube and on Twitter is loving these new crash stats, and they seem scary because percentage-wise, we're looking at some of the worst numbers in history, but there's a massive asterisk attached to all of these numbers. They're percentages, not raw data, and that's really important as I will explain. You see, as we come off one of the hottest housing markets in history where prices went up more than anyone could have ever imagined, and now as things are beginning to normalize off those highs, the percentage change is massive, but raw numbers show a different story. For example, if we look at the median days a home takes to sell, you'll still see that we're very low compared to prior years like 2020, or inventory which is rapidly rising percentage-wise, but we're still far off 2019 levels. According to Redfin, in July of 2019, there were around 2.5 million homes for sale in this country. Today, there are around 1.75 million, which means we're still pretty far off what was considered normal prior to the pandemic. But if you zoom to just this recent change, it looks very scary. The rapid acceleration seems absurd, but the overall picture changes when you zoom out. Even the people that published this article suggest a deceleration three times worse than 2008. When asked what will happen to those who just bought the top, the analyst says the following. So what happens to people who bought at the peak? Yeah, and I mean, really, when you look at it, about one in 10 mortgage properties has been bought over the last year. And the, and the dynamics are going to be very, very different depending on where you buy, right? We're seeing some areas of the country slow and, and even pullbacks in prices in some areas of the country, while other areas of the country remain extremely hot. You're also seeing larger down payments and, and lower LTVs than you traditionally do, right? So I think it's going to vary significantly depending on where you bought 
at what time you bought, how big of a down payment you put on your home, uh, among other factors. What's really happening here is a normalization that will end in one of three ways as explained by Bill McBride. A slowing, a stall, or a bust. Here's his very own quote. My definition of slow home growth is that annualized growth will remain in the mid-single digits. For the stall scenario, there will be close to no change in home prices. And for the bust scenario, home prices will be declining over the next few years. He openly says that the stall scenario is what seems likely. You can read the full post in the description below, but basically the summary is that the setup for a bust is simply not there. And the easiest way to visualize that is by looking at this chart which plots inventory versus price changes. And if you plot out every month of price changes throughout history and its correlated inventory level at the time the price changed, you get this clear view that shows undoubtedly that inventory is heavily correlated with price declines. Right now, according to the latest reports, which are months behind, we are here as far as inventory levels go. And as you can see, there has never been a time in history where we've seen price declines with such low inventory levels. For crashes to happen, we really need inventory levels to continue to explode upwards for the next couple of months. And then maybe that scenario will come into play. Of course, at the end of the day, nobody really knows what's going to happen. We're all just analyzing data that has been supportive in the past, but isn't guaranteed to provide clear results in the future. As always, thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it.